Yeah, great. Okay. So thank you so much, Jason, um, for this awesome film. Uh, really enlightening. And uh, my name is Marvel Wisdom with the Arts Everywhere Festival, and I'm here in conversation with uh, film director, director, uh, filmmaker Jason Da Silva of When I Walk. And thank you all for joining us uh, for the film. It, it's a very moving film. I hope you'll join us tomorrow as well uh, when we look at the next film, which is the second of the two, which is When We Walk. Uh, so the Arts Everywhere Festival, for those who don't know, is a place where conversations, ideas, and artistic experiments are presented on the Arts Everywhere platform. And all of that come alive in our home community of Guelph, Ontario. But we know we're speaking to the world. So wherever you're calling in from, wherever you're watching from virtually, we welcome you. This is a part of the Musigetti's foundation, uh, foundation's work. And it is through this work that we were introduced to Jason Da Silva, Emmy Award winning filmmaker. We were introduced by Sid Joke, and Sid is one of Jason's longtime collaborator and friend, who is also managing director for Arts Everywhere platform. We had the privilege of hosting Jason as a presenter at our January 2020 festival. And we wanted to see and more and, and hear more from him. And we wanted it to happen sooner rather than later. So uh, we started making plans and then COVID-19 came along. And as with uh, all of us, everything sort of was upended and we needed to pivot very quickly and try to figure out how we can get this film out to everyone and invite Jason back to hear more from him. And so this is what brings us to today and brings us to tomorrow our virtual uh, showing of When I Walk. Jason um, is also uh, head of a not-for-profit that he started called Access Lab, and I'm sure he'll talk with you a little bit about it um, later on. And we are really, really thrilled. We at Arts Everywhere Festival, uh, we are really working to reduce and remove barriers to active engagement and enjoyment uh, in the arts and beyond, and we recognize that it's not without its challenges and that we may not get it right some of the time, but we will continue to better understand and enhance access, whether it's physical, sensory, emotional, or cultural. And Jason, of course, has added significantly to our journey, as are some of the wonderful folks that we work with, like Bodies in Translation, that has helped to provide guidance um, for this. And speaking of guidance, we have uh, Wendelin on our line, and Wendelin um, will be taking some notes, and um, and just we're just working to make sure that we're the captioning pieces is, is working as well. Jason has been a prolific filmmaker for the past fifteen years. He has directed four short films and two feature-length documentaries, uh, lest we forget, and When I Walk. And When I Walk, which premiered at the Sundance Film Festival that you just watched, uh, it was broadcasted. It won Best Canadian Feature Documentary Awards at, at Hot Docs. It, it won the Grand Jury Award for Best Film at the Los Angeles Asian Pacific Film Festival, and Most Popular Canadian Documentary at the Vancouver International Film Festival. And it won at an Emmy in 2015 for Outstanding Information and Programming. So we're really quite excited and honored to have Jason here with us. And I, the first thing that I'm going to ask Jason, uh, before we get to our audience questions, can you share a bit about your motivation in making this film? And then why it was necessary to go beyond filmmaking to the founding of Access Lab? Yeah, thank you, Marva. So thank you, first thank you for having me here. I'm so excited to be here and thank you to our Diver and all the our Diver staff that made it possible for this event and tomorrow's event to take place. So yeah, so I'm very excited. So the, in answer to the first question, what motivated me to make when I walk? You know, so, that's a really good question. So 
I had been a filmmaker of 10 plus years when I first started the journey of making When I Walk. The last thing I wanted to do was turn the camera on myself and tell my own story. But I was doing my master's degree at Emily Carr, where I went to, for my master's degree, that I decided that I needed to point the camera at myself and tell my own story. The reason why is that that just wasn't really done. And I think that I wanted to authentically tell the, my story from a participatory point of view mm -hmm. of what it's like being a person with a disability who is also a filmmaker and really get, get in deep. That's why I'm watching this time. The, the whole film is a meta film. So it's a film about making a film. Mm -hmm. So the film is about making when they walk. And really, uh, that goes to show that really it wasn't as, it was as important to me to show my craft and show my, to unveil my craft to the viewer. So that led me to work making Access Lab. So Access Lab is the nonprofit that serves people with disabilities through media and technology. And When I Walk was our first project. So I really believe, and we all really believe, so me and the board of Access Lab believe that people with disabilities have stories that need to be heard and told. So give them the tools to tell their stories. I'm lucky because I was a filmmaker of 10 years before I got a mess. So now I want other people to be able to share their stories as well. So that's what we do. That is really quite wonderful. Um, Jason, you mentioned it's a film within a film. So how did you come up with a film within a film? And how did you um, get your family to be so engaged in your film within a film? Yeah, you know, so second part of that question first, and then I'll do the first part after. So my family, when it comes to to just being supportive of my filmmaking. I think they've always done that, but I really took it to the next level. Said, okay, well, why don't you guys be in the film? The same way that I'm telling the story and putting myself on film, you guys will be with me on the journey as well. So my brother, my mom, tomorrow you will see my dad. So they're all part of the filmmaking process. And really, I wanted to have everybody on the film just unveil it all and have all my family because they're fully supportive of my life. So of course it makes sense to put them in my film because they're fully supportive of my filmmaking. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the, the film within a film, I came up with that idea the more I worked on when I walked. I realized that it was uh, the film was about making a film because it was so difficult and took so long mm -hmm. to make the film. This was a seven year film that really I wanted to unveil the process to the, the viewers of the film. So that's why it's a film within the film. Because I wanted to show the difficulties and challenges mm -hmm. of being a filmmaker with a disability and telling my own story. Thanks, Jason. There's um, another question here uh, from Caitlin. And the question is, has editing become more accessible in 2020 for you? Uh, it, keeping in mind that you are still making films. Yes, I would say yes. That's a good question, Caitlin. So, 
editing as a uh, as a form has become way more accessible from when I first started. So I was a uh, when I first started, mm-hmm. I was in the tail end of shooting in film. So I just love the beauty of shooting on film and I can tell all the upstops and ISOs and ASAs and all these lost things that people don't realize now the art of just filmmaking is, is lost. And then the second part is I, I've been in the editing rooms when it was, we had something called steam backs. So steam backs and we shot on film. And really, I grew up with that whole, that whole way of making films. Mm-hmm. Then it then it switched to digital. Mm-hmm. So I finished this film. There's parts of this film that are that are celluloid. So that 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 part where I shot in India, I shot on 16 millimeter film in India, and it was great. But the rest of the film, I think, was digital at the, at the time when I was making the film. And uh, now, from now on, it's all digital. And then the, the whole process of editing has changed. Mm-hmm. So in the, in the past 20 years, I think, it's really changed. Uh, now you can shoot with your iPhone. Yes. It's crazy. So you can shoot with your iPhone. You, uh, I don't think the sound so good, but you really could like make a film on your phone, and you could add that on your phone as well. I think myself and all the people of the the old school filmmaking style could never even imagine that we've come to this so quickly. And it's been a while since you made the last film, at least the first film from the time from when I walk until now. Has the perspective of your illness changed at all? I know I had that question and Caitlin has the same question for you. How has making this film um, allowed your perspective to change, if at all? So uh, my illness has it's doing exactly what I saw that it would do. Mm-hmm. So it just slowly gets worse, slowly but surely. So it, the real problem as a filmmaker is my vision. It just drives me crazy. That like I'm getting a little bit blurry. And now I'm working on the third film. It's called When They Walk. And I'm still trying to so I don't know, I'm, maybe I'm uh, taking on too much, but I'm, that's what I know how to do is make film. So even if I'm a filmmaker that's losing, that's losing my vision, mm-hmm. I'm still going to try to to make the film. You know, there's a, so, so an athlete, a runner that, that, or whatever it is, so some people really have major, major uh, impediments that they have. But for me, it's not that bad. I still can follow my craft. <laughs> so that's what I'll do until the, until the end. Yeah. Oh, I lost sound. I think we're okay now. I'm okay. just saying that your spirit is incredible. Um, and I know that we've had such a pleasure working with you. Uh, you're patient. You have the best sense of humor. <laughs> and, and we really appreciate that. And we know how important that is. And you're taking every obstacle that is in your way in stride. And, and that's really quite wonderful. And saying stride, even that I'm learning, that perhaps using those kinds of um, word, words for some people can be triggering a little bit. So I'm learning as I go along. Uh, Jason, someone wanted to know whether um, through Access Lab, 
when you were talking about books and, and you were talking about your site, uh, just to, someone asked whether there were some adaptions for large print for some of the books that you're talking about that you mentioned in the Yeah, film. I would expect so. So, uh, so something, it was, uh, so at the beginning when I was using, I'm doing adaptions, like my monitor is huge, it's like four feet by three feet instead of a typical computer monitor. Or, but now my vision is so bad mm -hmm. that I can't even see that. So I need to have the, the letters really, really big on screen just to be able to see. Yes. That's like as big as like, I need to have like the letters maybe two or three feet tall to be able to, to see what the letters are. Mm -hmm. So now the thing that I do is audiobooks. Okay. I'm using a lot of audiobooks because it's sad. It's sad that I, the, the print form is something that's really challenging for me. Mm -hmm. But it's good. It's great that I still can can get the information in the, in a different form. Great. And so. What is the most joyful part of watching the film back? And what is the toughest part? Especially that you're talking about yourself and your journey and your story. Well, that's good. So the, 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 I think the part that I really enjoy when I watch it now is just the way that I really crafted the story structure. Mm -hmm. So I just... I, I use that same skill set even today. So I really uh, follow a model of the Aristotelian story structure. Mm -hmm. And it was good to see that I... So this film, I really knocked it out of the park. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was great because I really followed that, that to a T. And I did it really well with this film. The... Well, What's the other part, the, the hardest part? Is that correct? Yes, the hardest part. Mm -hmm. So what I would say is the hardest part is just watching um, watching myself get worse over those initial years was tough. But it, um, it still keeps going even after that. Yes. So it's tough to see... Those initial seven years was tough, where I was going from going from a cane to a walker to a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. Those were really tough. Now it's uh, now I'm just in a wheelchair all the time. Mm -hmm. But those those years were really tough, where I was first first going through that process. It, it's great that I was able to document. Great that I was able to document it, but it was a hard time. Yes, it would have been hard. Thank you. Thanks for that, Jason. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask an even tougher question, and this, this question is from Carl, the person who asked the question previously about um, watching the film back. Uh, and, and Carl, actually, it's Anonymous Girl, an Anonymous Girl, like Anonymous Girl. The message is about your son, and I know that you've documented that, so hopefully this is not too hard for you. How often yeah. do you get to see your son now? You were sharing with us while we were preparing this and uh, doing homework with your son uh, remotely, yeah. which is really quite wonderful. Yeah, so that's, so when I was talking about the things that are challenging for the film, yeah. when watching it back, that I would say is the other challenging thing is at the end of the film, this film was really having the hope that comes with seeing my son and knowing that he'll be in my life. And then now it's uh, you'll see in the side, I don't want to give away a story, but you'll see in the second film that my son lives in Texas now and I live in New York. So there's a whole other story that. So please stick around for when we walk tomorrow. Yes. This is be the next story. By the next few years of my life, that's really been difficult to see my son not being in my life. 
So it's, uh, yeah, that's a big chance. So I deal with that every day now, mm-hmm. still, but I'm trying to keep them in my life as much as possible. That's great. I mean, the, the homework time at COVID-19, I think we had asked you um, how things were going because you're in New York, we're here in Guelph, and those yeah. are the things that happens with this pandemic. And uh, I think the question was, how are things going there for you with COVID-19? And I think your response is that things are probably the same for you as they have been in terms of being able to move around the way you would like to. Um, and, and for people who are differently abled, the challenges that they have are some of the challenges now that folks with COVID-19 was facing. Certain places you can't go, you can't go when you want to. Um, And others are sort of controlling how far you can go. Can you comment on that a little bit, Jason? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's really funny. So, Sid, of all people, Sid. So one of my old friends, Sid, who works hard ever, he was commenting, and I was like, we're both both laughing so much. It's like, you know what, Jason? This is not that different from your normal life anyway. <laughs> and it's true. So like I so I've been lucky to be able to set it up so so I live my life at home since people come here to help me. And I just work at home. Not everybody has the opportunity. So I thank God they don't live in a nursing home or that they have some other big challenges. So I'm able to function. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, but what was the question again? Oh, just the COVID-19 and others mm-hmm. now sort of to some degree know how you feel uh, with being restricted. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. Not, yeah. Yeah, so it's not really... So for me, there hasn't been that much of a job. You know, I, like everybody, I want this to be over, but I've been able to function, which is nice. Thank you, Jason. Thank you for that. Uh, Is there anything that you want the folks, anything else that I haven't said that you want to share um, about Access Lab, about about what we're going to see tomorrow? So yeah, so the big thing is, uh, so I want people to come tomorrow. Uh, one other really big thing that I would love people to, to do is go to, so we have a new version of the access map. So go to axsmap.com. But there's a new version that is, it literally just got released this week. So if everybody can go to that website, Okay. They can sign up there. You saw it in the film. So it's the website that I've that I've been working on for ten years to find all the accessible places around me, and it's available all over the world. So I yeah, that's what I would encourage everybody to to get on that website and sign up and find places and great places that are accessible around them. Thank you, Jason. I hope everybody will sign up and I hope that everybody who's listening plans to tune in because we are going to repeat that because we don't want you to miss out on this. So Jason, I just want to say um, our thanks to you. We're not going to quite sign off yet, but there are a few partners that were a part of this as well. Certainly Access Lab, uh, the bookshelf, uh, who uh, with the social justice work that they do, that's so important. Um, They're a real champion of the arts. Uh, Bodies in Translation, um, based out of the University of Guelph, a a university community research project, and they aim to really cultivate and and research activist art, and certainly your art is activist art. Their website reads in part, we cultivate activist art produced by disabled, deaf, fat, mad, and elder people with the goal of expanding understandings of vitality and advancing social justice. So quite similar to some of the work that you're doing, Jason. And thank you to Tracy and Kayla from that team to help, to guide us. 
the Guelph Black Heritage Society who are working on putting a, um, not only a ramp, but an elevator in their building to make their space much more inclusive. And of course, Guelph Film Festival and at video uh, both uh, work and have a theme of social justice running through everything that they do. Please do visit the website as Jason has indicated. We're going to send some information out to you. Our team, um, Anna and, and Wendelin is on the line somewhere. So is Curtis and, and we'll make sure that we get as much information to you as possible. Uh, Jason, I know that Mimosa is around and, and your assistant, uh, Jody, who's really helped us a lot. Uh, we appreciate that. We appreciate your time. And lastly, I just want to thank everyone out there that has joined us today. I hope that you join us tomorrow. Bring one or two friends along so that you can have a really robust discussion. And we're going to send some information out where you can perhaps send your questions ahead of time for Jason and for those who we may not have gotten to your question. It's a great way to spend Father's Day. What a Father's Day treat, whether it's an uncle, cousin, or brother, um, or friend, this would be a great way for you to spend the afternoon with us tomorrow. So yeah. on that note, I'm going to sign off. And thanks, Debbie Parliament and Debbie is signing for us um, as I introduced earlier. We really appreciate that. And we hope that you'll join us. Thanks, Jason. Thank you very much. So glad that this happened. You know, we planned to do this in Guelph. And when COVID happened, we had to get inside and do it here. So I'm glad it all worked out. And our February is an awesome, awesome group. So I'm so glad that I did it with you guys. Thank you. We look forward with more work with you and Access Lab. I'm going to sign off now. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you.